And we're joined on the phone by Anita Ward, the one and only disco singer. You can ring my bell. She is uh, still out there ringing her bell on the Ultimate Disco Cruise that's coming up here in uh, 2020. Anita, how you doing? All right, how are you doing? I am excellent. Thank you so much for being on with me today. Oh, wow. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you bet. It's uh, it's exciting here coming up next year, the uh, Ultimate Disco Cruise. And I know you're going to be uh, part of the lineup this year. Can you tell the listeners a bit about it? Oh, well, uh, first of all, uh, if they want to find out any information, I'll get that about this cruise. They can go to ultimatecruise.com. And also, I want you to know about the people, some that's going to be appearing. Uh, it's going to be the Jacksons, uh, Jody Watley. Uh, the Commodores, uh, I mean, this is going to really be the fire. It's going to be a lot of great artists, some of whom I've been with, some that I haven't. So I'm going to be thrilled. It'll be like a, a great reunion for some of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it must be great uh, for you, uh, you know, just as a fan of some of these other groups to, uh, to be uh, seeing some of them. I mean, obviously you're never going to see a lineup like this uh, outside of this cruise. Yes, I agree. I agree. And it's just so, you know... Uh, Nice to know because some are no longer with us anymore, you know, but uh, it's about enough of us that we're going to make this cruise, like I said, the bomb. <laughs> going to make it the bomb. <laughs> so, Anita, when you uh, see these guys on the cruise, uh, do you think you'll just kind of slip back into, uh, you know, into the late 70s and kind of pick up where you left off? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, that, that's really all we've got to hang on to. So, yeah, that's going to be real easy to do. <laughs> it's sure real. Well, again, uh, the Ultimate Disco Cruise is uh, set in sail here uh, in 2020, uh, February, I believe. So you're you're going to want to get your uh, yes, cabins February booked 10th. now. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, hanging on to uh, to that time period, but I mean, you're you're still hearing, uh, you know, "Ring My Bell" and you know a lot of your uh, your songs to this day. And I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you about the about that song. I just read it was originally uh, supposed to be about teenagers talking too much on the phone. Is that yes. true? Uh, the gentleman that wrote it, uh, um, uh, Frederick Knight. Uh, he had originally written it for uh, Stacey Ladisol, and um, she was younger than I at the time, and so he had to change the music around slightly uh, for a more matured woman because at that time, as you said, it was going to be about teenagers chatting on the phone. And uh, so, yeah, he changed it around some. Yeah, definitely uh, you can uh, read into uh, how it would be uh, more mature, as you say, changing it around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely more mature, yeah. Even more mature than I was at the time that I did the record, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he had to change it around some. And he had, obviously, a, a great uh, idea. He knew that that was probably going to be the strongest uh, song on my album. And, uh, you know, he said we had to get something that was going to uh, uh, grasp the people's attention that they could sing along with and, and enjoy as opposed to trying to figure out what they were trying to sing. So, you know, it, 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 we had to do something like that. And he really worked on adding on things to it, too, because he's a musician as well. And so uh, it just came out. It, was, it, it had to be a hit. They said as soon as they played it, uh, even in the studios, in the clubs, I mean, the clubs, the people just loved it, and they wanted to hear it again. So it went gold after only two weeks. It went gold, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's it's interesting to think, you know, if that song had maybe been released a few years prior, do you think you would have stayed the course, you know, with that disco sound and maybe tried something else instead? Uh, well, uh, maybe, but unfortunately it just didn't go that well. My uh, former manager... He died in uh, Mexico while we were on tour, and uh, he was someone that asked me when he uh, when I went to the college that I attended, Russ College, to learn more about music because they said they had a, a, a wonderful choir that did classical music as well as gospel. And so, um, you know, he was someone who really cared. He asked, "Would I like to uh, become a recording artist?" Once he heard me auditioning for. Godspell at the college, and so uh, he just groomed me, you know, groomed me to help me to become to something I didn't know was going to happen, but it did, and uh, so he also took me in, in uh, studios to record, you know, back then they would have a demo of three or four songs, and that's what was used to take to, you know, uh, companies to find out if they wanted to, uh, you know, put you on board or not. 
And so, um, yeah, when he passed, it seemed like things just didn't, you know, ever pick back up uh, for me or I didn't have the, uh, you know, I just, I didn't know. I, I just would do a few shows every once in a while. But um, that's why I'm so very happy to know after all these years, despite, you know, I'm still being called to do something and be a part of something so great. Yeah, it seems like, uh, you know, for a while there, it was kind of, um, you know, in vogue to, to make fun of disco, you know, people burning records yes. and all that stuff. But, you know, nowadays, you can obviously tell the influence, you know, that style of music had on, um, you know, the stuff people are listening to that's popular now. It, it influenced a lot of artists. Oh, yes. And for me to come, the record came out in 79. And that's when the people decided to hate disco. But I got in there right <laughs> under the bar, I guess. <laughs> a little before, uh, but yeah, they they wanted to kill disco, and uh, so yeah, that did hurt some of us. It did, yeah. But uh, despite what's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So uh, this is really, really a wonderful uh, uh, thing to be a part of. It really is. Absolutely. Again, uh, the ultimate disco cruise coming up here in 2020, and. Anita, I know you took uh, a long break from recording. Um, could we see maybe some new music from you down the road, or is that maybe not something uh, you're into anymore? No, I am make every time I do things such as this, I do get to meet some more people, and maybe if we can hook up and somebody's interested, you know, uh, I, you know, maybe, maybe I will have. I would be just as honored as if I was still 22 years old <laughs> because, you know, uh, yeah, life is short. So they bet if, if something's going to happen, I best do it now. But, uh, you know, we, we'll see what happens. We'll see. I'm just not sure right now, though. Well, and I know you're still playing uh, some shows here from time to time. Uh, besides the disco cruise, do you have any maybe uh, shows coming up here next year? Maybe people can see you. Uh, well, actually, I do know um, I'm going to, on New Year's Eve, uh, I've been asked uh, to uh, do a show there, and uh, I think it's going to be in L.A. It's going to be in L.A., and there's a gentleman by the name of Randy Lopez who uh, used to do shows, but he also was um, a sheriff in town as well. So now he's retired from that. So now he's going to put all of his you know eggs into this uh, type of business once again. So I will be doing that, and uh, then I'm going to do a show in Iowa. That's going to be a February for Valentine's Day. It's going to be a special event, and that's going to be the week prior to the cruise, actually. So, yeah, it's, it's a few things that I'm, I'm you know, still trying to uh, get together, but some that have been already, uh, you know, done and set in goal are the ones I just told you about. And I also just left this, this past weekend I was in uh, Buffalo, New York, and uh, they have a benefit that they do uh, for cancer patients. Uh, they've been doing it since 79, and my goodness, you're talking about the outfits. They've been doing it every year since 79, and these people were, I guess that was part of getting me prepared for the cruise. You should have seen the way they were dressed. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, they really went all out. You know, the blonde afros, the, the uh, you know, the flare leg pants, the bell bottoms, the platforms. Oh, it's something big that they have had. And there were about, I think they said 8,000, seven or 8,000 people that were there for this event. And so uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Awesome. Very, very much so. Anita, I'm a big fan of yours. So thank you so much for your time today. I really enjoyed it. Okay, same here. Thank you so much. And again, that was singer Anita Ward. She'll be part of the Ultimate Disco Cruise coming up in February of 2020. So uh, head on out to get your cabins, and uh, Anita Ward will ring your bell coming up in 2020.